All right, hello guys. Today I'm going to be showing you guys a potential future hurricane for the East Coast here. I think this one does have a lot of potential to develop a lot. So we're going to have to talk about the potential for a lot of development with this one. But before we get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description and as well as the pinned comment. Now we're looking at the satellite imagery for this one and you can see it's located right over the Bahamas right now. A lot of those reds and dark colors, those are gonna be where our tallest clouds are at as of right now. And there is some thunderstorms going on in the Bahamas right now because of this. We're gonna see this move generally towards the northwest and then head up the coast. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that as the video goes on. Make sure to stay tuned for the end of this video because you will see my official forecasted track for this one at the end of the video. Now here's NOAA's five day graphical tropical weather outlook. And you can see they have it heading towards Florida and then up the coast, like I said, into this yellow region. Where that X is is where it was at 8 a.m. It's located a little bit further to the west at this point, but that's where it was at 8 a.m. And that was their 8 a.m. update. Now here's your temperatures comparatively to normal along the east coast. We do have our Gulf system out there that you can watch my previously uploaded video for that one. If you do live in the Gulf states, that one's going to affect you guys possibly. But we're talking about the east coast in this one, and we do have temperatures that range from about average to about 2 degrees above average as you head offshore of New Jersey and New England you know, two to three degrees above average Celsius, which is pretty far above average for sea surface temperatures up there. And as we look at the actual temperature, you can see there's mid, low to mid 80s along the East Coast until you get to about off offshore of, you know, New Jersey, southern New England. That's when it heads more into the 70s. But still, we have a lot of room for development out here. And this is well warm enough temperatures for tropical development along the East Coast. Now also, here's your wind shear. You can see there's not a lot of wind shear at all going on along the East Coast, so that's not really going to interfere with this system whatsoever. It won't have to battle any amount of shear whatsoever, which is bad news as far as development is concerned. Really what we can hope for as far as development, and this might sound weird, if it, inter if it actually makes impact with Florida, that's going to be the best case scenario because that's going to really limit the development if it makes landfall early on. And it would only bring a lot of rain. It wouldn't really bring a lot of winds. But if it doesn't impact Florida, this one could develop into something a little bit more major. Now, here's your, here's your Saharan dust. And you can see there's a lot of that out there in the eastern Atlantic, but as far as the western Atlantic is concerned, we're not really dealing with much dust whatsoever, so that's not going to be a concern either for this one, as it has very moist air to work with, and that's going to really help it to develop. Now here's your tropical intensity index, I always show this one. We have red along the entire southeast coast there, and that's highly favorable conditions. So again, this one can just take off and develop as much as it really wants to or is capable of. But as of right now, it looks like the, the sky's the limit with this one and it can really develop to a pretty strong hurricane in my opinion. This one could be one of, I think, the second Atlantic hurricane of the year. I think that this one has the potential to be that. Now, here's your ECMWF probability of tropical depression. You can see, so this is from... Wednesday till Saturday, we do have a 40 to 50% chance of seeing this one become a depression within that point. According to the ECMWF, that's what those light green sh colors indicate. So in between Bahamas and Florida, we do have a 40 to 50% chance of tropical depression uh, development. Also note that right offshore of Africa out there, we could have our next wave that we might need to start making videos about soon as that one's going to be our next concern after this one, obviously. Now, as you see, it heads off shore of South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, and that's regardless of if it hits Florida or not. If it doesn't hit Florida, there is more chance of development later on, but either way, it's going to curve back out east and then likely be offshore of South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia. And again, in those yellow colors that are starting to show up within that light green shade, that's 50 to 60% chance of tropical depression development. Now, we are going to take a look at our tropical storm development odds for I think a similar hour. This is Saturday to Tuesday. And you can see this is uh, within that dark purple shade. That's 10 to 20. The, the blue shade that is 20 to 30. And then that green shade where there's a few dots within that, that is 30 to 40% chance. So as of right now, they're kind of lowballing it. That's what we usually see with these. We don't usually see them calling for like strong chances of tropical storm or hurricane development right off the bat. They kind of develop as, they kind of intensify as it develops and they start to call for stronger and stronger. They usually don't call for 
much development early on and they kind of go as it develops. Now we're going to be looking at our cyclonic relative velocity here and you can see this is it over the Bahamas. This is in 18 hours. So this is this is this afternoon. This was the 0Z run. The, Euro the European doesn't update until about an hour from now. So this is from last night's European run. But this is for this evening. And you can see there is a lot of velocity there where those purples are showing up. That's some pretty strong rotation going on. And this is really going to be an indicator that we will see some intensification over the next day or two. Now, you see that it does head into Florida on the European model. This does make impact with the the east coast of Florida there. Uh, again, rain is the biggest concern, not going to be dealing with too much wind at this point. And then you can see it bounces back into the middle of the Atlantic. Like I said, it's going to head kind of northeast from that point. And you can see those purples and reds showing back up again. This is by Monday. You can see it's well out of the way. Uh, Georgia's not really at much of a risk. Coastal South Carolina, you're kind of at risk. This one could go further east than we're calling for. But I really, really think this one's going to stay out to sea like we're seeing here on this model run. Now, we're going to move on one frame, and you can see it's offshore of North Carolina. You can see the Outer Banks could be getting some bands from this one, those yellow areas that are hitting the Outer Banks. But gen generally, the storm is staying pretty far offshore to where it's not going to impact the coast too much. And now, this is where it's at the point where it's possibly becoming more of a tropical storm. You can see it has that shape and also that amount of rotation with a lot of those purples and even pinks in there. The European is really calling for this one to develop quite a lot, and this is one of the first storms this year that we're seeing develop a lot, obviously. So we're going to move on one more, and now we can see the northeast, uh, it, or the northwest Atlantic, and you can see it is offshore of North Carolina still. Some of those bands still hitting the, the uh, Outer Banks area, and then we're going to move on one big frame. By the way, uh, it's going to be offshore of North Carolina around Tuesday-ish, Tuesday morning-ish, and then we're going to move on to Thursday morning. So this is a whole day skipped. And you can see it's offshore of New England by this point, And it's still just really looking very intense with those pink colors in there. This has some strong rotation with it and could potentially, again, become a pretty strong storm. That's why I'm calling for this one to be a potential hurricane at this point. And we're going to move on one more. And you can see uh, Newfoundland and uh, Nova Scotia areas like that are going to be the next area that have to worry about this one. In that, in that southeastern Canada region where this one could potentially impact you guys in, in some ways, obviously. I don't know if it'll hit directly. That's pretty far out, but it is possible. And by the way, that would be hitting Canada around uh, Friday morning. Not this Friday, but next Friday. Now, here's your total rainfall for Florida. You can see with this one, we're expecting a general one to two inches of rain for a lot of areas. But you can see where the storm actually tracks, there's a lot of areas that get six to eight inches of rain in the Bahamas and then out in the middle of the ocean where it's not really going to impact many areas. Uh, the Outer Banks as well, getting one to two inches of rain there. And then it heads offshore from that point. So not many areas in the United States get that much rain according to this model run. Again, this could always trend west. And then we'll be talking about a lot more impact on the East Coast. So that's why this one's really scary because it really could just push a little bit further west. And, and then we'd be talking about a major situation here. So that's why we're going to continue to update you guys on this one daily. Or maybe even more than daily. Now looking at the GFS rainfall, you can see it's not quite as much. Half an inch to an inch for Florida. But in North Carolina, we are expecting two to six inches of rain there for the Outer Banks, Central North Carolina, and Coastal South Carolina. So a lot more rain for the Mid-Atlantic on this one, a lot less rain in Florida for this one. Now here's my official forecast for this storm. You can see tropical dis disturbances the next five days. And as you can see, we're expecting this one to, it's in su the Southern Bahamas right now, kind of near Cuba, and it's going to generally head northwest until it most likely makes impact with Florida, but there's a great chance that it doesn't, and it stays a little bit offshore, which again, the best case scenario as of right now is that it hits Florida early on and isn't able to develop any further. I know that sounds weird and sounds like kind of counterproductive where it's like, why would you want it to hit somewhere? Well, that's really going to limit the development because it's always possible that it hits somewhere later on. So if it hits Florida now, it'll really limit that development. If it stays offshore, it'll likely develop more and more. You see, it is possible that it does hit the coast of Georgia. It is possible that it hits the coast of South Carolina, but it's far more likely that it stays well offshore of those regions. Possibly could make landfall with North Carolina, Virginia, and Maryland. But again, more likely it stays offshore of those regions, well offshore, and then heads northeast from that point. 
and we'll have to continue to update you guys on this one because this looks like it's going to be more than a one week type system. We could be talking about this one for up to two weeks as it heads up the northeast coast. Anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this outlook for this one, and I hope you continue to watch the updates if you are uh, in anywhere on the East Coast, really, or at risk of this one, because it is a serious situation. Whether it's a tropical depression, whether it's just under a tropical depression, or if it's a hurricane, this one is probably going to bring rain to the area, a lot of rain to the areas that it impacts, and that could create flooding. Wind could be something we're talking about in the next video, where I'll show you the forecast for the winds according to the models. So we'll have a lot of updates on this one and there's a lot more time to go and we'll have to see how this one plays out. Anyway guys, I hope to see you in the next video. Stay safe and have a great day and week and next two weeks.